Hey everyone, welcome back to Tactical Magic. This is Molly Mandelberg, your host, and I am uh, very excited for the conversation we're about to have on this show today. Um, one thing I'm really passionate about is helping people find um, a deeper sense of purpose in their life, to find work and do work that really brings them a sense of fulfillment. And I have an expert on that on the line with me here today. So hang tight, we'll be right back. It's not just about mastering technology. It's not just about brand or messaging. It's not just about making more money. It's about showing up in a big way so your people can find you. This is about bringing your most wild and authentic self into the hustle and grind. Welcome to Tactical Magic, a business strategies podcast for the warrior goddess entrepreneur. Awesome. So Anne Benveniste is a career and life coach and founder of The Career Studio, where she's focused on making it easier to build an energizing career you love. Her work is focused on the idea that when you boil down the noise, there are four fundamental things to focus on to bring your career and life into alignment. These four concepts are like a playbook that you can come back to again and again, as inevitably who you are and what you desire evolves. Um, prior to becoming a coach, Anne worked in marketing and advertising in London. Today, she lives in Brooklyn, New York. And when she's not coaching, she's out seeing music, surfing badly, apparently, down at Rockaway Beach, or exploring the intersection of psychedelics and mental health. Welcome to the show, Anne. Thank you so much for having me, Molly. Happy yeah. to be here. So tell us a little bit about, for you, how did you find your way to the career path that you're on now? Yeah, I think for me, it was... a. Uh... A little bit of a process of trial and error and a lot of U-turns or wrong turns that ultimately led me here. You know, I I grew up in an environment that really valued academic rigor and a level of kind of, I don't know, around me, kind of corporate excellence or, you know, being a doctor or a lawyer, a lot of kind of shiny titles. And that was kind of the space that I grew up in and you know, I, I built my career to try and fit who I was into the mold of what I'd been taught was the right way to approach your professional trajectory. So for me, you know, I, I've always been interested in creativity and design and always interested in psychology, you know, why people act and behave the way they do. And so in the corporate context, that's marketing. And I, I built my career for about 10, 12 years in advertising and brand strategy. And that was great for a while until I fell out of love with it. And I kind of had this crisis of identity. Like, if I don't like this, what should I do? I don't know what I want to do. I panicked. I did an MBA because I thought it would look good. And, you know, when you do things to look good, usually that's not uh, that's not the path to fulfillment or alignment. And so, you know, the MBA took me on this whole side course of activity that really wasn't fulfilling. I ended up in tech and really didn't enjoy that. And so, you know, I, I really got especially into a space that wasn't a good fit for me after the MBA. And that's when I really, I was desperately unhappy. I was burning out. I really wasn't thriving. I eventually got fired from a tech job. And, you know, that was really the wake up call. I needed to say, Anne, like this really isn't working. You know, the way that you're making your decisions about your career are wrong. And you're playing in a space where you're not going to thrive and have fun. And what is it that you actually like and enjoy and where where can you actually shine and you know along this whole journey i'd i'd met some coaches and i'd always thought that was a really awesome idea but i never really gave it space so you know i i had started doing some volunteer coaching and i really fell in love with it and i decided in that moment of getting fired okay it's time to do this thing that's really giving me energy even though kind of becoming a coach really wasn't something that was celebrated or known within the social structures that I'd been raised in and educated in. So yes, that's my answer to that question. But I'm so happy to it was a leap. It was a leap to follow your heart and move in that direction. Yeah, I think it was a leap born out of 
necessity, right? It was almost like I was so unhappy and I was, so, I wouldn't say rock bottom, but it was so confronting to be fired and to have been through three or four years of just kind of really feeling unhappy and depressed and out of alignment that that leap felt necessary. Um, but yes, it was a leap. Yeah, totally. And I think like you said, brewed out of necessity that getting fired from a job suddenly creates this vacuum of how do I fill the space? <laughs> what do I do now? How am I going to make an income? And not everybody gets the, I don't want to say drama, but gets that uh, fire under their ass, so to speak, of being fired that a lot of people will just sit in that discomfort of this isn't what I want. This isn't working, but I have to keep it because it's the thing that I know or the thing that I've you know put years and years of time into. I was mm -hmm. just having a conversation this past weekend with one of my dear friends who is massively unhappy in his career and feels very stuck in that he has to stay in it. And so I'm curious, do you have any advice for someone who maybe hasn't been fired from their job yet or uh, doesn't know what the hell to do next, but how to sort of start shifting the energy from I have to stay here to what else is possible now? Yeah, I mean, I mean kind of treading water and staying where you are is a very common thing I see. And, you know, if you, a lot of people don't, don't take action because they don't feel a level of conviction about what they want to do next. People are waiting for this aha moment, this like source of inspiration, and they feel like it should be really clear and they should feel very certain before they take action. And really passion doesn't work like that. It doesn't arrive one day fully formed. Rather, it emerges by fostering your interests and building gradually over time. For me, coaching was something that built gradually over time. Um, so, you know, if you are not liking your day job, you know, thinking to yourself, what are some things that are piquing my interest? Who has like a career that I think is cool? What kind of activities do I think are interesting? And finding and creating space in your life outside of your day job to start exploring those, talking to people who are doing them, doing some projects on them, volunteering to do work with other people on them, just to allow yourself to explore in a really low pressure way and start to just foster those interests and see what continues to draw your energy. And, you know, little by little, that can create a next step. Yeah, it creates the next step or it gives you a lot of feedback and information about whether that's the direction you want to keep moving in or not, which is so valuable. Yeah, exactly. You'll notice if the energy dissipates or if it continues to build. Yeah, totally. That's basically exactly what I told him. And that's how my business got built too, was mm -hmm. I was curious, I was interested, and I was willing to start showing up for those interests and curiosities until it expanded into something greater. And then of course, it continues to evolve and shift and change and rearrange. One thing I like to tell people is clarity doesn't come from Co cognating your way to it, it comes from action. So if you're willing to show up, if you're willing to get curious, if you're willing to, like you said, have conversations with people who are doing that already, see where there's opportunities to insert yourself or just go down like a digital rabbit hole, geeking out on that thing and see if it still keeps your interest because our energy, our, our awareness sort of pulls our energy out of us and it feeds us in a way that a rabbit hole that doesn't pique your curiosity or doesn't hold that fascination for you, it's not going to feel the same. You'll you'll know that sense of, ooh, let me tell me more or ooh, let me find out more about this, that that sort of pulls you forward down a new path. And that can absolutely be done while you still have a day job if you're willing to make time for it, carve out time for it, maybe you go to dinner with friends one less night a week because you want to spend time geeking out on this new pathway. Like it really yes. is possible. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, creating creating that space, kind of setting the boundaries so that you have spaciousness to explore is um, important. Yeah, totally. So tell us a little bit about those four fundamental uh things to focus on when you start looking at wanting more career fulfillment? Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of noise out there, as I said, and I think there's basically four themes that come up time and time again in all of the content that's out there about how to build a career that you love. And I see them as follows. 
you know, and I present them in this way for narrative purposes, but they're equally important. The first area is your brand. And I say that in a really the authentic sense of the word brand. Who are you? What are you about? You know, the whole philosophy of my business is it takes less energy to be yourself. So when you design your career around who you are and what matters to you, that's when you're going to thrive and have the most fun and create the most impact. And I see that as kind of a reflection of three things. Brand is a reflection of three things. You know, what are your strengths? You know, the actions that come so naturally to you, they don't really feel like work. Strengths is how you add value to any business or group or community. You know, uh, strengths are kind of the, what the role is that you would have, right? So for me, I'm really good at building relationships quickly, seeing people for who they are, championing people, right? And all of this makes me a, a natural coach. Um then you want to take your strengths, you want to apply them to the topics that interest you. You know, what is your brain like thinking about? What kind of problems do you like to solve? This is kind of going to dictate the space that you want to play, the industry. And then combining that with your lifestyle priorities. You know, how much money do you want to make? What kind of people do you want to work with? What kind of schedule do you want? Once you have answers to these three things, this becomes your compass. It becomes a map that you can use to dictate the direction you want to build your career and you'll be building it in accordance to kind of who you are and that's how you're going to add value and create impact in the world um and, you know in order to do that though just like we were talking you're then going to have to talk to people and that's kind of the second fundamental concept is learning how to have informational conversations with people who can guide you and open doors right opportunities are built through relationships not by applying to job boards on linkedin Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, a lot of your ideas, you can only get so far when you're thinking about them. They're only half-baked in your own head. The only way to add clarity is to talk to people. And as you were saying before, you know, the way to move through this confusion or kind of treading water is to take action. You have to take action through your confusion in order to create clarity. Clarity just doesn't arrive. So learning how to take action through confusion is essential and having conversations about your ideas is how you take action through your confusion, right? So a lot of people are only using relationships to like try and get an interview, right? And you're missing out on so much wealth of knowledge and support that you could be using to create opportunities for yourself and gain knowledge. Um, the third pillar, fundamental cornerstone, is um, all about your mindset. You know, when you're stuck in your career, you're usually stuck in your mind in some capacity. And learning that the, the thoughts that you put in your brain, the repetitive stories that you tell yourself is what creates everything else. Your thoughts create how you feel. How you feel then creates your actions and your actions create the results that you have in your life. So when you learn how to create perspectives that are open and flexible and support you to take the actions you want, this is how you create new things in your life. When we are closed and fixed in our beliefs about ourselves and what's possible for us, this is how we stay in the same place or close doors or don't create possibility. So really learning that we are in charge of the narratives we tell ourselves, and these are always optional, and we get to choose what we put in our brain and therefore choose wisely, right? Because what you tell yourself, you will create. So, you know, I work with my clients a lot on learning how to develop that mental flexibility, learning what some of the static beliefs are they have that are getting in their way and how to replace those. So this is pretty fundamental work that changes how people operate in all areas of their life. And then the last cornerstone is about um, setting boundaries, right? Learning how to manage your time effectively. To your point earlier, you know, you have to create space to explore your ideas. Um, you have to create space to fill your tank with activities that energize you so that you can show up as the best version of yourself to not only work, but to your friends and your family. So learning how to identify what those activities are and then set communicate and hold the boundaries you need to do those activities is imperative. So yeah, those are basically the four areas. Awesome. They they feed into each other a lot as well. Like yes. once you start working on the mindset stuff, your dexterity with holding boundaries around your time or prioritizing yourself is just going to get easier and easier. It sort of steamrolls into a new state of being. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, connecting with more people, having more conversations, 
it's going to allow you to s- sort of pinpoint or zero in on your strengths a little bit more because you'll start seeing what capacities naturally come forth, what tendencies you have with, you know, finding a problem or finding a solution or wanting to play in that game at all. I love what you said too about um, being yourself, that when you're doing the work that really feels purposeful and aligned with who you are, that you're really finding a place in the world where you're getting paid to be you. And I actually put on a little sticky note that I had on my altar that I would meditate in front of for like years and years on end. I get paid to be myself. And that Mm -hmm. was when I was first starting my business and was like, how the hell do I make money doing this? Or what am I doing? Which pathway am I going down? And I can say for years now, I really do. I get paid to be myself. And what a treat. What a lucky thing to have landed on where not only do I feel like what my capacities are naturally get to be utilized, get to be functional, get to be expressed, but that's also the thing that is what's generating me income. Like some people don't think that you should get paid for your healing work or that that it bastardizes it in some way or that your art is more pure because you make it for the sake of art rather than making it for a living. You can hold that point of view if you want, but there is some serious satisfaction that comes with doing the thing that lights you up, doing the thing you're most interested in and allowing that to be your income source. It actually expands that part of your life rather than making it tainted in some way. So I just wanted to add that point in there. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to just riff off that because this is, I mean, this is basically the tenant. Besides this concept that there's these four areas to focus on, that's the other key tenant of of what I work on. And my opinion is, you know, to your point where some people have a opinion that you shouldn't make money off of your art. My opinion, and you know, other people have an opinion like you shouldn't, um, you know, pat like don't do something around your what you're passionate about. And, you know, my my response to that is like, you have to build in strengths, interests, and your priorities, right? And those three things have to weave together, right? There's And nothing is a 100% silver bullet. But think about all of the energy that you waste revving your engines to do something that's not a good fit for you, right? Like where you have to like rev your engine to get interested in the topic or like do a lot of work that doesn't come naturally to you or isn't how your brain thinks or working with people that are really toxic for you or whatever, not making enough money for you to kind of live fully. All of that is wasted energy and you are not living into the impact that you could make to the planet right to our to your community to our society to the planet as a whole right so i think it's like a disservice to humanity for us to not i mean i'm getting very like spiritual but to not live in as much alignment as possible because when you are really aligned that's when you can take all of that energy and put it into creating great impact instead of wasting it revving your engines right so i think we all owe it not only to ourselves but to the communities and things around us to do that yeah absolutely i i speak to many many healers and holistic practitioners and that you know money is the root of all evil whatever concept comes through and so they want to do their work for free or they've been you know convinced that doing their work for free is the holier path or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's the exact same argument I make is that if you spend more of your time making a living doing something else, then you are innately doing less of the healing work that you have the capacity for. So you're literally robbing the world of more of that kind of healing. And how is that the the best option? How is that the the holier choice? It, it can't be. Um, so yeah, I love that. I love that we're aligned on that perspective mm-hmm. too. Um, and it is it's encouraging. I know there can be people who are in a place right now of like, well, I don't know what the hell I want to do, and I don't know how to start doing it. And that's why people like Anne are a really great option to work with to help you find and navigate what that thread is for you because it's going to be different for every single person. And having a great coach means that they're able to meet you where you are and help you figure out what that next step is for you. Um, But the mindset thing really comes into play too. There's so much uh, tendency toward conclusion. There's tendency towards um, solidity in this is who I am 
or this is how I operate, or this is what I do. And that all of that is a conclusion. And if we're living in conclusion, things get, like you said, static, they get stuck. And it's when we start asking questions and getting curious, what would be, what could be different? Who, who am I really? What else is possible for me? What else is possible right now? What else am I willing to choose or explore now? When you start asking questions, it immediately breaks up the solidity of that conclusion that you've been living in. Um, So I'm curious, what are some other tactics you might be willing to share when it comes to just addressing that mindset of, you know, I am this way or this is stuck or I'm treading water or whatever the case may be? Yeah, that's a good question when you say it like tactics. Um, I'll say like as a macro point, um, you know, you always want to believe that the things that you dream about could be possible. You don't have to say with absolute certainty that they would, but just opening the door to could, right? It just as an addition to like your point around questioning, this idea of like it could be possible. To me, I really like that phrase because it's just like, you believe it's possible or it could be possible, you're going to get as close as possible because it's going to mean you're going to think creatively, you're going to act from a place of what could it look like. Um, So yes, I really agree with that. In terms of tactics, I don't know if you're feeling stuck. I like, I always like a free write, you know, writing down all of your beliefs about what isn't working and why you can't do whatever it is you're thinking about. And everything you write down, those are basically your your fixed and closed mindsets, right? Like you, and a lot of this work is about just first and foremost shedding a light or drawing awareness to the thoughts you're telling yourself. And so once you see them on paper, like I'm too old, it's too late, it'd be too much work, I don't have the right education, whatever you're telling yourself you know that's like an alarm bell when you say those thoughts to yourself you're closing doors right like it it all starts with our thoughts it's like a tv channel like an old school television when you're on the channel of it's too late i'm too old i don't have the right education it's too hard you don't move forward and so what you have to do is change the channel and so if you are if you do a free write you look at all of your limiting beliefs that are going to be there on the paper then do another free write of what if it was possible? What, what, you know, start asking questions to your point. Start opening the door of what could it look like? What do you believe in yourself? What do you want to try? Right. And then see how you feel writing that. I'm sure you'll feel more open, a little bit more hopeful, a little bit more optimistic. And those are the emotions you need in order to take action, right? You're not going to take action from a place of insecurity you're going to take action from a place of hope. So I don't know if that's tactical enough. That would be my uh, like okay. immediate. I'm yeah. a writer. That's like the main tactic for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Um, I, I want to just bring in a point around how we care for ourselves too, because mindset mm-hmm. and doing work on our mindset is it's one thing to do it with intention and actually go towards it and choose it. And there's also a lot of factors in our lives that can diminish it. So, you know, being around people who complain a lot or, mm-hmm. you know, not taking care of our physical well being, you uh, seem like a very on top of your shit kind of person. And like you get a lot <laughs> done. You. And I would say I, I am that as well. And I know that for me, it takes a lot of daily rituals and practices and um, choices to focus on optimizing my capacities as far as my health, my wellness, my mental health, my spiritual awareness, mm-hmm. all of those things I focus on on a daily basis to keep my sort of keep myself in the game, the level of the game that I want to be in. So I'm curious, what do you do? How do you take care of you? How do you run your life so that you get the most out of what you're doing? You know, it's, it's a, such a good question. I think it's a question I am always working on, right? I'm always optimizing because what I what my business needs is different and who I am is always changing. So I think, you know, first and foremost, approaching this idea of, you know, scheduling and self-care always from a place of like it's evolving um, and I'm always iterating. 
And it's never like one and done. It's not like one day you just decide I'm going to be a meditator and then you just meditate every day for the rest of your life, really. Like, <laughs> anyways. Um, but, you know, now that I work for myself, I found it really important to have um, days where I coach only and days where I'm free to create. And so I coach Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I create Monday, Friday. And so this you know, energetically works for me. Uh, and then I, for me, I have a lot of like low impact movement that makes me, you know, I'm all about connection. That's actually my word for the year is connection, connection to myself, connection to communities, connection to people who need my work. That's really the, the word that's driving my goals and actions this year. And so from a physical perspective, I'm, I swim, I do yoga, and I do Pilates, and I meditate. And those action, those behaviors allow me to kind of connect to my body and connect to my mind and center myself. So um, yes, that's my initial answer. And, you know, I also have some people that I really, um, you know, are, when I need a talk, I'm a talker. I'm, I, I get paid to talk for a living, and and I love that. Uh, I have a couple key people in my life that I go to when I when I need a download. So yeah, yeah that's kind of my self care rituals at the moment. Yeah, totally. Having people around you who can support you, and then also making the time and honoring the time to tend to your body because our bodies play a huge role in our productivity, our mental health, all of the things. Yeah, you know, I think. One of the things I didn't mention in my cornerstones, but is something I, I work on around time is well, I work with a lot of people that are procrastinators. And I was a like a actually procrastinated a lot in my life. And it's something I've really worked on. And so I'm very, I would say actually the other really big piece of self-care for me is I am very diligent about taking time every week to look at my to-do list and actually map onto my calendar when I'm going to do everything, how long it's going to take, when I'm going to do it, you know, project planning out into the future months in advance when I'm going to do stuff, and then learning how to hold myself accountable to doing what I say I'll do when I say I'll do it. And that's been an exercise in learning how to sit with the discomfort or the resistance of sometimes doing stuff when I don't want to do it, but then feeling the elation and the pride that comes with doing the thing you said you do when you said you do it. And that has been a real piece of personal growth that I've gone on, especially over the past few years in becoming an entrepreneur because no one else is holding me accountable. So, yeah. Yeah, we have to do it for ourselves. I think there's something beautiful that happens too when we make a date with ourselves, especially for creative projects like that. Um, I think the the higher self, the muse, the guides, whatever, when you make a date with them, I'm going to do this creative thing at this time and you actually show the hell up, they show the hell up too. Um, so I think it's a beautiful way of honoring your creativity, honoring yourself and also honoring whatever that divine connection is that allows more magic to come through when we keep when we keep our word when we hold ourselves to something like that i'm interested how do you how do you channel that divine connection for yourself when how do you make sure the muse shows up when you want her to one really great way is keeping the date saying i'm going to do this then come to mm -hmm. me then and the other is honoring the voice when it comes through if you find yourself saying i'll write that down it's so obvious i'll remember it write it down right then <laughs> anytime i hear myself thinking oh i'll remember that my now program is i've trained myself no you write it down right fucking now <laughs> because otherwise it gets lost and and those ideas are what has built my entire business is allowing those creative ideas to not only get written down, but then to get explored and teased out and played with later. Um, so I I honor that voice when it shows up and I honor the dates that I make with it. When I say I'm going to sit and write something or I'm going to make something, I go and I do that thing. Just like you yeah. said. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, yeah. I have like loads of just half written ideas that I keep in a document. And then when it's time, then they kind of go into maybe a little bit secondary stage and then only a fraction of them become full blown, you know, concepts that I'm, I'm putting out into the world. But, um, you know, I think a big growth thing for me in, in creating has been like, you know, that process of showing up and doing it. And that process isn't always going to be the same every time. Sometimes the creation 
is it, the creation feels different. At least this is my personal experience feels different every time and being okay that that creation process sometimes feels differently and not holding expectation for it to feel like genius every time. Sometimes it flows out of me perfectly and it's in its genius. And I'm like, this is amazing. Sometimes it's a little bit more struggle bus, but um, yeah, that's uh, kind of letting go of that and being okay with however it comes together. Yeah, absolutely. I would say giving myself creative time that isn't dedicated to my business is also me, my version of like priming the pump with that muse, that divine connection too. I write Mm -hmm. every morning. It's not always about my business or for my business, but that means that when I sit down to write something for my business or for my clients' businesses, I've already gotten the word gunk out of my head so that that stuff isn't there percolating, needing attention. Um, which allows more of that flow state to come through. Same with art. When I spend time making art, some part of my muse cup is full. So when I go and need to use it for something else, it's more available to me. I've been tending to and honoring that part of me in a way that allows it to show up for me. I love that. I think I'm going to take some of that. I think I need to put more space in my calendar just to create my own art. Yeah. Yeah. And it can look at all, I mean, a lot of different ways. Sometimes playing with our bodies and dancing or exercise can be a form of creativity too, I think. Um, but mm-hmm. I can sense through time and space that people have been listening to this episode and like, shit, I'm driving and I I can't take notes. Like these were some great ideas. So first off, I just want to say Anne has an amaz- amazing podcast, The Career Studio. So go subscribe to that right now. And also, do you have resources or things that people can dig into, start playing with these four pillars in their lives, um, maybe get to know your work a little bit better? What's the best place for people to go follow you and check you out? Yeah, I mean, the best place is is the podcast. I'm also, I post um, a lot of content on LinkedIn, if that's a channel that you use. And I have a weekly newsletter as well. Um, I also have a free download on my website that kind of goes into these concepts in more detail. So, you know, if you're a reader, you can do that. If you're a listener, you can listen to the podcast. So it kind of is choose your own adventure. But yes. Awesome. Yeah. So it's thecareer.studio is the website you want to go to. That'll p- probably find you all of those resources. Um, what's what's the name of they should look up on LinkedIn if they're heading there? Yeah, it's just Anne Benveniste. Anne Benveniste. And that will be in the title of this episode in case you're wondering how to spell that. It is pretty phonetic though. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Uh, you shared a lot of magic on this episode already. Any last words of wisdom that you want to leave people with? I think listen to that voice, listen to the thing that keeps tugging at your heartstrings, even if it's soft, right? You usually know what it is you want to explore more. It's just about giving it airtime to do it. So listen. Listen. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show, Anne. Thank you, Molly, for having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you everyone out there for listening. Um, We've got events coming up all summer. If you're listening to this in real time, go to wildheartsraiseup.com slash events to check out an upcoming workshop. Maybe join me on the line and whatever happens, keep asking big questions and taking bold action because you are here for a reason. Bye.